Hope you and your family's doing well. All right, champs, let's get rid of Windows Home and let's get some Windows Pro. Copy and paste my code from the description. New codes, new discount. You can get Windows Professional Office. Paste my code. Boom. It's Windows Pro time. Yes. If you're new around here, come on. Get on the Woo train, sub up. And if you like this video, come on, smash that like button. Now this festive season, you may be in the market for a laptop. And it might just be the 15 inch premium thin and light gaming laptop. Well, which one's the best to get? Well, I've narrowed it down to three. The Razorblade, Alienware M15 and the Gigabyte Aero 15X. Apologies to the Zephyrus MGM501 and the MSI GS65, which are actually great laptops, but there can only be three, and these are the three I've chosen. With the MSI, I just don't think it's as good as the Gigabyte, the Razer, or the Alienware. And with the Zephyrus MGM501, if you just want the fastest gaming laptop, get that one. That, that's the fastest. But I might be wrong here, so let me know down there in the comments if I am wrong. But I think most people that get these sort of laptops, they want something that not only is great at gaming, but is good as a daily laptop. And I think the Zephyrus, it's, you know, 2.5 kilos. It's a little bit heavier. It's also, the battery life is only like three, three and a half hours. That's not very good for daily usability as, you know, a portable laptop. It's great for gaming, no doubt. So when it comes to price, the Gigabyte will be the cheapest. The Razer Blade and Alienware will probably be around the same sort of price once price is settled down. Remember, the Alienware is actually just new. When it comes to specs, have a look at the specs. They're virtually a friggin' carbon copy of each other. Now I'm talking about the best spec model. You can get 60 hertz monitors on these laptops and two and a half inch drives, but I'm talking about the one with the big battery. This is more for like daily use, which once you have the big battery, you don't have the two and a half inch drive bay. So these are the best specs you can get on all of them. They're virtually all the friggin' same, aren't they? <laughs> like seriously. Some notes to take from this is the Arrow's got the biggest battery, followed closely by the Alienware and the Razer has the smallest battery and that sort of works out the gigabyte and the alienware would be the same sort of battery life and the razor would be a little bit behind those two when it comes to battery life so you're looking at about seven hours with these models depending on the display of course have a look at the weight of the alienware and the razor blade they're virtually identical there too uh, the arrow is a little bit lighter but one thing to note is the alienware does have a sort of unique footprint it's sort of a bit taller or deeper or whatever you want to say but actually using all these ones i don't feel much difference inside size and weight and the specs are pretty much all the same when it comes to fit and finish and build quality i love the razor's design but i don't like black laptops and i don't like that green logo on the back they do have a killer white one it's limited edition i would love that i could rock that so i think the razor blade has the best sort of design and fit and finish to my taste but the alienware is just like the king of cool it just looks cool and I think it's the toughest. I think it's the most robust out of all of these. And the Gigabyte Aero, it's sort of like benign. It's just, it's a no-nonsense, utilitarian, black sort of laptop. It's good, good build quality, but it just doesn't really stand out in the design stakes. When it comes to ports, I definitely have to give the Gigabyte Aero here. They have every port known to man, like even SD card reader, display port, and HDMI. It just has everything. Second here would be the Alienware because it does have that graphics amp port. Now I am doing a video on the Alienware graphics amps, so or I'm gonna spoil it. It is the fastest graphics amp you can get. But I think most of them have got good port selection. But if you want the most ports, yeah, the Gigabyte does have the most ports. When it comes to sound, ooh, interesting. I'd say the Razer and the Alienware are probably the better sound in laptops. None of them have bad sound. The Alienware gave me a nice surround sound, but the Razer was pretty crisp. So yeah, much of a muchness there. Keyboard, I like the keyboard on all of them. They've all got good keyboards. Although I do like the Razer's layout. I don't want no number pad on my laptop. Just don't think it's necessary these days and when it comes to trackpad yeah the razor blade alienware good trackpads but the gigabyte aero that's where it falls short and for me for a daily usage yeah that's where it's always going to fall short it's fine if you just use a mouse you know just dis disregard what i'm saying here but if you want to use it for like video editing and stuff like that like using the trackpad it's only like a 7 out of 10 it will annoy you to video edit and just daily use compared to other trackpads it's just not there it's not bad but it's just 
mediocre, I guess. Both the Razor Blade and the Alienware do have a good trackpad, but I will say the Razors is in the middle, so I do like that. Displays, they all have cracking displays. Like, I do love the colour accuracy of the Gigabyte. Like, it is really colour accurate. Probably the best out of the box experience if you're a content creator, but all of them have cracking displays, 144 hertz and a 4K option, and all the 4K options are wide colour gamuts. So if you want to calibrate, you're going to get a good display out of all of these. All of them are great. Perform Performance, wow. Throw a blanket over them. Really, seriously. I will say the razor blade will tune itself down a bit, reduce the wattage a bit more. The Gigabyte Aero is a little conservative. I reckon they could push more out of it if they wanted to. And with the Alienware, they just try and hit everything for six. They try and hit it out of the park. And I'd say the Alienware and the Gigabyte Aero are very similar in performance and the razor blade just a tad slower. But there's not going to be a great deal of difference. They've all got pretty much the same specs, but the Alienware is definitely tuned the most aggressive. So if that's what you want, yeah, that's the way you go. When it comes to upgradability, they're all the same sort of upgradability there. So the overall conclusion is here's the deal right with the Zephyrus and the MSI they can even be included in here but I had to pick three I just don't want to go through 100 laptops so the honest truth is with any of these laptops I guarantee you'll be happy any of them like you will be happy so if you've picked one or the other don't worry you've got a good laptop that's the good news and it's really close between all of them but when I slap down like serious amounts of money like 2k 3k 4k there's one thing that separates the Alienware for me and that's one, it just seems like it's built tougher. I have no evidence of this, but it just, Alienware's are built like tank. They're tough. And most importantly, out of all of these, Dell supply chain, Dell support. Dell support is up there with Apple support or Apple Care, whatever you call it. You know, you got a problem with a Dell. I mean, it would depend on your region, but here in Australia, if I've got a problem, I ring up Dell, 24, 48 hours, I have some bloke around here who'll fix me laptop, comes to my house. How good is that? So what happens here in Australia if you have a problem with a gigabyte or a razor or a Zephyrus or you have to take it back to the store or send it back to them in a box then here in Australia if it's a DOA unit yes you'll get a replacement straight away but if it's not if you've had it for a few weeks you've got to send it back or take it back to the retailer and it can take up to six weeks here in Australia to get you know the laptop back I cannot be without my laptop for six weeks now fortunately I really could but just for a normal person who's got the one machine that's going to be unacceptable for me and given that these laptops are so close you've got to take these things into consideration when I drop this amount of money I want good support and the only one I can guarantee Dell or Alienware whatever you want to call it they have the best support I was actually sad giving that Alienware back because I want one. I need one. For the first time, I've actually wanted to actually buy one of these sort of gaming laptops. So I prefer, you know, XPS 15, MacBook Pro, you know, ZenBook or something like that. Because gaming on a laptop is secondary for me. Really, I like to video edit on it. So I don't need the biggest, beastiest gaming thing out there. But now, this is the only one that's piqued my interest to actually buy that one with the big battery, I think. Yeah, I want one of those. Anyway, let me know what you guys think. Let me know what you think is the best. I hope this helped you out. And until next time, guys, tally ho.